Middle market companies have closed the books on 2017 in terms of revenue and overall performance the strongest year since the National Center for the Middle Market began tracking that performance in 2012. Once again, the middle market, the companies that make up the middle market, have shown that they are the market that moves America. I'm Tom Stewart, the Executive Director of the National Center for the Middle Market at the Fisher College of Business at The Ohio State University, with the latest numbers from the Middle Market Indicator for the fourth quarter of 2017. The Middle Market Indicator, the MMI, is a pulse check for companies with revenues between $10 million and $1 billion a year. Those companies, 200,000 of them, comprise the middle market. They represent a third of U.S. private GDP and a third of U.S. private employment. They also represent the greatest share of economic growth. The current economic expansion is 114 months long, nine and a half years. For middle market companies, revenue growth remains strong despite the long length of this expansion. It was 7.6% on an annualized basis for 2017, and that's up from 6.9% a year ago. We've been tracking answers to a question we ask, which is whether overall performance, sales, profitability, competitive advantage is rising, steady, or deteriorating. In 2017, 71% of companies said that their performance improved and just 6% said that it deteriorated. That's a ratio of nearly 12 to 1 and it's more than double what it was when the MMI was launched in 2012. They say a rising tide lifts all boats and that certainly has been true. 2017 was a particularly big year for the construction companies with growth in the second half of the year driven in part unfortunately, by recovery from Hurricanes Harvey and Irma. But business services turned in an equally strong year, and middle market manufacturing revenue rose 7.1%, which is a very robust number. Not surprisingly, that strong revenue growth also produced strong employment growth. In 2017, middle market companies added to payrolls at a 5.2% clip which is twice as much as big business added and nearly four times as much as small business did. Now, underneath that impressing, impressive number is a challenging fact. As unemployment goes down, as the economy nears for empl full employment, it's harder and harder to find talent for open positions. Uh, indeed, that 5.2% payroll growth, impressive as it is, is the lowest in the last five quarters. Strong demand and tight labor markets mean companies have to work harder to do three things. First of all, to retain employees because they can't afford to lose them. Second of all, to train employees, which not only helps but with retention, but also helps improve their output and productivity so you can get more from the workforce you have. And third is invest in capital equipment and other things that will increase output regardless of the size of the workforce. And we see, see evidence of all three approaches in mid-sized companies. Last quarter, talking to you, I talked about the increases in employee benefits and other value-added other value parts of the compensation package for employees. This quarter, I'd like to highlight that training number. Uh, the, it's a stunning number. 38% of executives say that they are considering increasing their training activities, which is up from 30% a year ago and 26% in the fourth quarter of 2015. So a lot of additional investment in building up the skills and quality of the workforce, in part to make up for that shortage of, of available labor and talent. After almost 10 years of uninterrupted expansion, executives are highly confident about the economy and the business climate. No doubt they're also expecting a bit of a boost from tax law changes. All the world's major economies are expanding, so it's no surprising that confidence in the global economy is at the highest level we've seen and 23 full percentage points higher than the average over the six years of middle market indicator data. National economic confidence at 88%, 86%, excuse me, is higher than it has been in every quarter but one, and, econo and the confidence in local economies expressed by executives at 88% is at record levels as well. Now, a long expansion 
put stress on a system as well, of course. There's growing evidence of price and cost pressure, not just in labor, but in healthcare costs, energy, materials, and interest rates. 48% of middle market executives say that their customers can expect to see a price increase this year, which is up from 40%. We said the same thing a year before. There's also some evidence of some softness in some companies' new order pipelines. For now, though, with a very strong year in the books, healthy profits waiting to be harvested and or reinvested, and an overall economic environment that seems to justify the confidence they feel, middle market executives are getting to work in 2018 with every expectation that they will continue to be the market that moves America. For more information about the middle market, visit our website, which is middlemarketcenter.org. There you can find the entire middle market indicator, the data I've summarized here, lots more data, and all the historical data, all of which is available free of charge. You'll find lots of other research also from the National Center for the Middle Market about such topics as mergers and acquisitions, managing talent, cybersecurity for middle market companies, and much, much more. That URL again is middlemarketcenter.org. And I'm Tom Stewart for the National Center for the Middle Market.